Hello again, my name is Gene Felder with Desco Industries. I'm the Corporate Product Manager. Uh, we are doing a series of uh, ESD control video clips and today we want to talk about compliance verification. For people who want to access these, go to uh, DescoIndustries.com. We go to market through quite a few number of brand, brand names. So select the icon with the brand name that you purchased. Click it if you go to their website. Uh, the, uh, the brand's website, there will be a tab, ESD information, and all the videos that we've done will be uh, listed there. Now, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, free downloads, documents from the ESD Association. Their website is esda.org. So they have uh, ANSI ESD S2020 available at no charge. That gives you the information and the requirements for a written ESD control program. Also uh, available at no charge is the packaging standard, ANSI ESD S541. Uh, there are others including the glossary, which is uh, uh, the terms used in ESD control. Now in 2007, S2020 was updated, and there are a number of tables in that document listing uh, technical requirements, and it tells you now that for product qualification, you require a specific ESD uh, uh, association standard, but basically everything in compliance verification uh, is uh, ESD TR53. Uh, TR means technical report, so if you go to ESA, ESDA.org and you go to technical reports, you can purchase uh, the ESD TR53. This is the one document I would recommend most people who have a facility have an ESD protected area that they purchase. Now the cost is uh, $75 if you want a, uh, a hard copy and, you, uh, and you're a member of the ESD Association and it ranges to $130 if you want to download it and you are not a, not a member. Uh, why, why should you uh, care? Uh, well, S2020 requires that uh, you have a written compliance verification plan and uh, the test procedure for compliance verification is ESD TR53. So let me uh, go through this. Um, and of course, what you have is users that are like three different types. If, you, if your company has a good ESD control program, there should be absolutely nothing new in this. And if you've documented the test procedures uh, that, uh, that you have for checking your various uh, ESD protected area, ESD control items, they should be basically the same as we've written in here. The ESD TR53 includes what test equipment to uh, use, the simplified test procedure, and it also includes troubleshooting uh, information. Um, the, uh, there's three tables in S2020, table one for grounding, table two for personnel, personnel gra grounding, and then table three for your ESD protected area, ESD control items. Uh, if you're a company that uh, has a good ESD control program and you do compliance verification, but say you've never gotten around to documenting the testing that you do. Like every time uh, an employee goes into the ESD protected area, they check their wrist straps or they check their, uh, their foot grinders or ESD footwear. Uh, if you go in here, bingo, it should be exactly what you've done. Uh, and, uh, and instead of you starting with a blank piece of paper to document what, uh, uh, what you're doing, you can take the, the text from, uh, from this document, ESD TR53, for your con uh, compliance verification test uh, procedure. Now, unfortunately, we sell lots of ESD control products, and we have people that buy them, install them. They don't check them when they install them. They don't check them when they, uh, uh, over time, and they can run into big, big trouble. E an ESD control program should be robust. Uh, we have an ESD awareness guide, and we uh, uh, compare it to uh, a hospital room, uh, an operating room in a hospital, and sterilization. And uh, many people have gone to school, and you get graded on, on the curve. But in sterilization in an operating room, and ESD control in your factory, if you have nine different steps, where the uh, different items are supposed to be sterilized, you do a great job uh, on the nine steps, 
But there's a tenth step in there that you, the, uh, say uh, the, uh, the, the medical item gets completely contaminated with germs, then this is not good enough. Usually 9 out of 10 is a 90% is an A. Do I get an A? No, you don't get an A. You get an F. Because why? Because the, uh, uh, the patient may get infected, the patient may die. Uh, in ESD control, if you have nine different uh, uh, manufacturing steps that you do a great, robust ESD control where everything is periodically checked, that it's, uh, it's what it's supposed to be, it meets the required limits of the tables of S2020, but then you have some other manufacturing step where the ESD sensitive item is subjected to electrostatic discharges. Do you get a A? Hey, I got 9 out of 10 items. That's 90%. I get an A, right? No, you get an F because that uh, if you don't have a catastrophic failure in your product, you may very well have uh, latent defects that you're subjecting your, your products to. So you want a robust ESD control program. Uh, it's very important because uh, whatever uh, quality problems you have with your product, the warranty claims, if they are intermittent, if they are puzzling, they almost for sure are ESD type of uh, damage to those, to those products. So uh, as I say, the test equipment is in here. Uh, typically uh, an item like for uh, work surfaces is to measure resistance to ground. The simplified test is to just measure it to, uh, to ground, which is a systems test. Then in troubleshooting, if you get a bad, a, a bad resistance reading, then you might, with two five-pound electrodes, measure resistance top-to-top, uh, -to -top resistance RTT. Uh, we go here to uh, uh, another simplified piece of equipment is a AC outlet uh, checker. This checks that the AC outlet, uh, you have what, hot, neutral, and ground. We're going to ground. And this just verifies very quickly that the uh, three items are wired correctly. Um, so in here are uh, the various things, work surfaces, of course, wrist straps would be a normal wrist strap checker uh, uh, per, uh, uh, primarily. It also gives you a procedure to check uh, with a meter uh, the, the wrist strap. You have footwear, flooring. Uh, two different ways to check uh, ESD garments while they're worn, which is typically with a wrist strap tester, uh, uh, or, or you lay it on an insulative surface and measure it with the five pound electrodes again. Air ionizers uh, are measured with a charge plate monitor or this SP3.3, uh, we call it an ionization test kit, where you can uh, measure the discharge times by using a stopwatch or even counting. Uh, so it's, it's the normal type of equipment that people use. Also covered in here are seating and mobile equipment like uh, carts. Once again, typically the five pound electrode measuring, uh, the, uh, measuring the resistance to see that it meets the required limit in S2020. Uh, in this, there's a short little annex, and we also uh, we often get questions about how frequently should you go out there and test these various uh, items. Uh, basically, the only item that there's the strong emphasis that 100% should be checked are ionizers, but uh, uh, sampling uh, can be done just like your normal QC system for sampling inspection, and the test frequency. We don't know the, uh, the value of your product. We don't know uh, what, how bad it can be if there's a failure. So what it says in uh, ESD TR53 is that each user must determine their own test frequency. Buy this one. This is the number one uh, recommendation from me. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention.